So these birds are pretty much seven weeks old. And you see, that's a good wow. sized chicken right there. Hi, folks. In these next few videos, we're going to talk about pasture raising meat birds, specifically chickens grown in chicken tractors on pasture, supplemented with broiler feed, but with the tractors and chickens moved every day so that they get access to the grass and clover and insects and all the stuff that they would normally eat. What we're gonna show here is one proven method of raising meat birds. My friend Dave in this video has raised thousands of meat birds over the years at his homestead in New Hampshire. So I've divided this video into three parts. The first is brooding basically buying the chicks, setting up the brooder, how to brood them, how to feed them, water them, and then we'll talk about feed prices. The second part is pasturing the birds, basically building the chicken tractors, using the electric poultry netting, moving them around the pasture, and how that's done. In the third video, we'll cover the equipment used to process the birds once they're finished. I've also included a little part about a community approach to pasturing meat birds. If you enjoy this video and find it helpful, please like and subscribe. If you'd like to know when I upload more videos, please turn on notifications. And if you have any questions, please comment below. I will get back to you. Thanks. So what I found is I bought all males. You pay an extra 50 cents or whatever and you get all males. They tend to die. The mortality is high. So what I do is I'll buy half female, half male. And it seems to help really decrease the mortality. Hmm. You get, you get, you know, the, the the females, the hens are like three and a half, four pounds. The males are at five to six pounds. So, some people want small chickens, some people want bigger. It seems to work really well. Hmm. And for some reason, it seems to help the mortality. I don't know if the females are smarter and shows the males how not to die. And so these birds are pretty much seven weeks old. And you see, that's a good wow. size chicken right there. For seven weeks old, yeah. yeah. There are three main things that you need to properly raise and process meat birds. You need a place to brood the chicks, you need a place to pasture the chickens, and you need a place to process the chickens when they're ready. So the first item, the place to brood the chicks, this includes the building they're in and the brooder itself that they are in. These chicks will need light, heat, food, water, and bedding. Most people set up the brooder in a garage or a shed or an outbuilding. As long as you can keep the space free of cold drafts and free of predators, including your cats and dogs, you'll be fine. Now for the brooders themselves. Some people use livestock watering tanks or troughs. They work well and they're widely available in a multitude of sizes up to about eight feet in diameter. Round, oval, or hexagon brooders work well. You want to avoid having any brooder with square corners because chicks can and will pile up in those corners if you have any temperature fluctuations. If you get a pile of chicks, you're going to have suffocated chicks at the bottom of the pile. Most folks use infrared heat lamps to brood their chicks. You don't want to use white light. The red light helps hide any red spots or injuries on the chicks. If the other chicks see an injury, they will peck at it and can peck the injured chick to death. I see a lot of people buying 250 watt heat lamps and in fact this year at our local farm store that's all that was available for a couple of months. But really unless you live in a very cold climate all you really need is 125 watt bulbs and you're much better off with two 125 watt bulbs than you are with one 250 watt bulb because of the redundancy of the to 125 watt bulbs. Even here in the Pacific Northwest where we have pretty cheap electricity, we pay 7.3 cents per kilowatt hour. But even here, two 250 watt bulbs running 24 seven for four weeks in the brooder will cost us about $25 in electricity. To put it in perspective, that's more than it costs to charge our electric car for a month. Of course, two 125 watt bulbs running for the same amount of time would cost half of that, about 1250 in electricity. Infrared heat lamps have been responsible for burning down many sheds and barns, so please be careful. If your light fixture comes with a clamp, don't use it. That's just asking for trouble. Make sure you secure the light fixture well. If you're going to hang it from above, a lightweight chain is the best thing to use. Please note that the red heat lamps are fairly fragile and prone to burning out, so it's always a good idea if you're brooding in a cold climate to have more than one heat lamp. The old adage of two is one and one is none really applies in this case. 
there are heat lamps that are sold as being safer. Uh, Premier in particular has one. I have never used one and I would say use at your own discretion. Some folks use ceramic reptile heaters. These work well and are less dangerous than the red heat lamps, but one drawback is that the reptile heaters don't give off any light. So you can't tell from afar if they're working or not. If you're using a red heat lamp and you glance outside at your shed before you go to bed at night and see a red glow from the lamp, you can be assured that your chicks are getting heat. Other folks use commercially made hover heaters, which are radiant heat panels. These work well and are much safer than the infrared heat lamps. The panel's heat is distributed evenly across their surface, so even if they touch straw or wood shavings, they cannot start a fire. My buddy Dave has an old chicken coop that he uses to brood his chicks in, and he prefers the Ohio box or hover box heater for his chicks. He's normally raising 250 chicks at a time, so his setup is geared for that sort of volume. But this is all I want to show you here. This is the Ohio box. Okay. And obviously it flips down. Yep. So like I said, just put a little insulation in there. Mm-hmm. A Reflect couple ticks. light bulbs. If I was yeah. really smart, I'd have each bulb on its own plug. Mm-hmm. Um, just so you could have half the... Yeah, in case it's, like, if you notice that they're all not in it, you know, because that little Turn it down. barrier, you know, goes a fair bit bigger. And say mm -hmm. if, they're, if they're too cold, they all go underneath it. Make That's four foot square. This is a four foot square, which is a convenient size for plywood. Yep. Uh, but super effective, super cheap, and mm -hmm. what's great is the birds self-regulate. Yeah. Know? If they're hot, they go under. You can tell because they're all outside of it. Mm -hmm. If they're cold, they're all underneath. But that works. That works really well for the brooding. You will need feeders and waterers for your chicks. To minimize the diseases that the chickens get, you want to minimize the amount of poop that they eat and drink. I've tried a lot of different feeders, and I recommend this style or the five gallon bucket style that Dave's using. Preferably hung from a chain above or set up on some blocks of wood to keep it out of the bedding. The less that the chicks walk in or on the feeder, the better. Keeping the chicks from drinking poop is even more important, so I very highly recommend that you use nipple waterers. Any sort of waterer that's not a nipple waterer, any sort of waterer that has a pool that the chicks can drink out of, is bound to get poop in that pool. And that means you have to clean it once or twice a day. Nipple waterers, peck waterers, there's no standing water, no place to poop in them. I have received chicks in the mail and started them on peck waterers on day one. It's not a problem. They take to the peck waterers naturally. It's super mm -hmm. easy to make. I mean, these are like, the last time I bought them, granted, I was for years ago, they were like 97 cents each. Now, are those the screw in ones or the no, push in ones? Just push in, just drill a hole and I put a little bit of uh, like olive oil or canola oil just to, and, if, and I even set, I, you get the right size socket so you can, yeah. you know, you put a hundred of these in it gets, your thumb gets yep. sore, but, yep. but you can also get a five gallon bucket and just put three of these on the bottom of the bucket. Yeah, so now, and what's nice, like about the reason why I do this is, you know, you've got 60 birds, you want the water to be able to spread through, that's why I went to this. Cause that works pretty good. I mean, yeah. you, you know, this is just a tiny one from the brooder. Now for the bedding for the brooder. Most folks use wood shavings, but you can brood chicks on all sorts of bedding. This year we are trying wood pellet bedding. The pellets seem to generate less dust than the wood shavings do, but if and when the pellets get wet, they swell and turn into a mushy sawdust. Whatever you use, just make sure your chicks have fresh bedding every so often so they're not walking entirely in poop for the three or four weeks that they're in the brooder. Feed can be the biggest cost involved in raising meat birds. So it's important to do your research ahead of time and figure out where you're gonna get your feed from, how much it costs to get it shipped to you or picked up, especially if you're raising a lot of birds. If you're raising a lot of birds, you're talking about a lot of feed. It could be a ton of feed that you have to move and store. So do your research ahead of time, get your pricing and get your feed reserved. Feed costs can vary greatly by region and also by the type of feed. If you're talking non-organic petrochemical raised feed or if you're talking organic non-GMO feed, the price difference is huge. So 2019 prices. In this video, Dave was feeding non-organic 20% broiler feed crumble. He was paying $12 a bag for a 50 pound bag. So that's 24 cents a pound. 
his birds would eat about 12 to 15 pounds of feed per bird in seven weeks. So that's about $3.60 in feed per bird. Dave says he figures on 15 pounds per bird just to be safe. So for 150 birds at 15 pounds each, that's 2,250 pounds of feed total or 45 bags total over seven weeks. So 2020 prices for broiler feed here in the Pacific Northwest. Our broiler feed ranges in price from 31 cents a pound for non-organic feed with some local non-GMO feed at 44 cents a pound all the way up to 86 cents a pound for organic non-GMO feed delivered from California. So if you think about that, our feed price per bird could vary from $4.65 per bird to $12.90 per bird, depending on what we feed them. I've put a list of example feed costs at the end of this video. Remember, your birds are what they eat, and consequently you are what your birds eat. So if you feed them not very good feed, who knows what they're going to taste like, and who knows what sort of nutrition you're getting from them. Dave was selling his birds for five bucks a pound. So a four pound bird at the farmer's market will cost you $20. A five pound bird is $25. He said that if he was feeding organic feed, he'd probably have to charge $7 or more per pound. But he's found in his area, his customers have an aversion to paying $35 or more for a chicken. In a Seattle's farmer's market this past fall, I watched someone sell Red Ranger chickens for $12 a pound with the head and legs on. So what I would call a three pound chicken with the head and neck and legs off, they were selling for $46 and they were selling them. It all depends on your customers and your market. Of course, you have to figure in all your other costs, labor to take care of the chickens and then process them, the cost of the equipment, the overhead, the miscellaneous supplies like shrink bags, etc. If enough folks are interested, I'll do another video that covers just the economics of all of this. If you're planning on raising hundreds of birds, you're gonna need grain storage. Here's an economical idea. Especially non-working chest freezers are very easy to transfer. <laughs> Take it away, please. Right. So insulated box, keeps the rat, keeps stuff dry. So typically, we're getting near because we're going to slaughter soon, so it's only that last. But that bag, typically I'll pour them in the five-gallon buckets and carry the five-gallon buckets over to the pens. Mm -hmm. It's just easier. And so yeah, like put a scoop or so of sand on the top. Real sand, like yeah, river sand. sand. Something gritty, you know, that you can buy it. I looked at it. I had some uh, decomposed granite, like a granite dust. Oh yeah. I'm like it's the same stuff, you know. Yeah. So I was like, why, well, you know? So just it's just grit. It gets in their crop, helps them process their grain more efficiently. So. Mm -hmm. And I try to gauge the feed. You could pull the feeders at night. Yep. But I just try to hey, if there's zero feed the next day, you know you did it right. Like at night you check on it. You want to kind of if they eat it out right at the end of the day, that's so, kind of what you want. So I got a buddy that uh, raises rangers. Yep. And he's got like a feed schedule. Yep. For 25 birds, he does a certain amount for the first three or four weeks. Yep. I think it's free feed for the first three or four weeks. And then, yeah, he does a very specific schedule. Yep. And that's fine. Um, there are people that do that. I don't like doing the math. <laughs> so basically, because what they're more efficient. Like if you just have them 100%, 24-7 access to grain, mm -hmm. they aren't as efficient. It's like that mob feeding mentality. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the easy way that's slightly less lazy is you could have it full, pull it at night. Right. Back out the well, he said when you put that amount in for 25 birds, like they knock it out in the first 10 minutes. Yeah, and that's part of what you want. If they get they get that. And so what I found is with the pens, you move them in the morning, they get used to it, they come, they start exploring the grass mm -hmm. and the bugs and the worms, whatever, that gives them the flavor and then the grain. But I, ideally, I say with a little bit of a couple of days, you can pay attention and you just, the grain's gone. Mm -hmm. at the end of the day and that's kind of what the same as pulling but you're so, feeding them moving them in feeding them in the morning every day yeah. Yeah. uh there's probably roughly 50 birds in here those two five gallon buckets get spread evenly amongst the pen i see so this i don't know this one like i said these two feeders have so that's grain. basically a bag of grain yeah. spread among yeah. 150 birds yeah. every day and that's a 40 pound bag or a 50 pound yeah. bag 50 pound bag and, uh, you know, it pretty much works out. You know, 250 birds are going to take 60. And what I found is this. 
if you have mortality, mm -hmm. like they get cold or this or that, you're gonna, you know, you, let's say, so, let's say there was, I did the math, you could technically put, I think this is nine by 13. Mm -hmm. So you could put like 66 birds in there, I typically don't. But let's say I had 66 birds in here, I think there's 50 in there now. Um, I like to have them a little bit of room to move around. Yeah. Um, 60 birds in here and they were all four pounds. The, the, the poundage works out the same. So oh, okay. you, you'll have less birds, but they'll just be bigger, or you'll have more birds and they'll all be smaller. I mean, but the actual pounds of meat produced per shelter is pretty much the same. Hmm. Like they, it's kind of maybe it's like goldfish; they kind of grow to their environment. Right. Um, so you know. Interesting. Yeah, they, yeah. Do you have any trouble with them getting broken legs and stuff like that? Not typically. I think the beauty of this system is the movement every day. They gotta walk. Right. They gotta move. Um, and so with that that system, they you know keep some relatively healthy. You know, they're not raised on poo. Better for you, tasty too. Right. So I have heard, and I actually have tested. We used to have a uh, like a cistern that would collect. Uh, water off the roof, uh -huh. and chickens do prefer rainwater over huh. hose water. Um, but obviously, I let it run, let get it. You know, I don't want to fill them with plastic. Yeah. Um, we this was well, advantage of this location. You got the the uh, well right there. But when I had them remote, I had a jeep, and I would just fill five gallon buckets of water in the back, and I could just going dumb that was pretty fast and that's when I because I, I would have the rainwater out of that which was nice um, I have had two buckets mm -hmm. you know if I was worried about it um, and who knows this one was just empty so but that's another advantage of the big PVC pipe it has a volume of water in itself so even you don't have any problems with algae or anything not really. Now, if you do, I, in the past I have um, a little bit of uh, apple cider vinegar. Yep. And some people use that as a probiotic. Yep. Um, anyways, but that pretty much takes care of any of that. So, um, a little bit of ACV. And th that you said is a what size hose? Uh, I want to say it's a 3 8 hose, rubber tubing. I did buy that blue stuff is nice. The clear stuff will build algae up in it. Okay. Um, that you get the hardware store. This stuff from I think Randall Berkey is where I. Uh, is it like an air hose or is it supposed no, to be a water hose? No, it's something sell right with it, and it's for this purpose. Oh, okay. Um, it's just a supple tubing, um, but the fact that it's solid color it doesn't build up. Yeah. And you and if that's three eighths hose, you said you're drilling a five sixteenths hole, and you just silicone it, or it doesn't leak? Silicone, just friction fits. Boop. Really? In, don't it just it's nothing to it. Drill a hole, pull it through with a pair of pliers, you're done. I might cut the tubing at an angle. To start it. To start it. But... In the next videos, stay tuned for chicken tractor design and processing equipment and setup. I do plan on doing future videos to cover more of this stuff in depth. If you have any particular questions, please leave them below. Thanks. Mm -hmm.